All right, so we're back on the John Deere uh, Tractor 140 build. Um, the completely fully electric uh, John Deere lawn tractor. And I got this for super cheap, like 50 bucks, and I restored it, repainted it, and added an electric transaxle into it, and it's, it's finished. And I just want to put this, build, uh, this last build video together to show you guys the finished product. Um, I have three other build videos for you if you're interested in the process. I'm gonna go over some of the electronics, the battery situation, the charging, um, obviously you can tell I have a custom made plow for it, which I've prim primarily been using this to plow with. And I'm going to show you that, as well as the chains. So um, yeah, let's get started. I'll show you the, the final process, the final, the final build of what this turned out to be. Alright, first things first, let's open up the hood. Opens up just like it normally would. And inside, I have a NoCo Gen Genus Gen Pro at 10X4. <laughs> That's a mouthful, sorry. Um, this is an extremely nice, both lead acid and lithium battery charger. Um, I'm off obviously just running, like I've said in my other videos, just some lead acid batteries. They're kind of like uh, what you would see in uh, deep cycle batteries that are put in go-karts or golf carts, sorry. Uh, pretty similar. I have four of them, and this is obviously the X4, so it can charge one at a, uh, one individually. So it charges four at a time, connected to one separately. This gives me maximum charging rate. I get the whole the whole thing's fully charged in about one hour ish. Um, so that's actually really good, and I can run it for about I can push snow itself for about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how how uh, much I want to push the batteries down. Uh, so that's pretty good. I can easily do my driveway and a couple of their driveways pretty pretty easily. So anyway, that's a charging system. Um, I just put it inside the uh, the tractor itself. It's just mounted on a couple pieces of, of wood that I've drilled into the frame. And so it's got a 48 volt system. Uh, like I said, 12 volt batteries, four of them, so 48 volts. But then I also have, if you notice back in here, which I'll get a closer, closer look for you. This is my 12 volt system. So I have a regulator here that uh, converts from 48 to 12 volts and then goes into this, this fuse panel here, this fuse box. And right now I just have some kind of just alligator clips because I was doing some testing for my front hydraulic uh, linear actuator. But uh, it works great. I could plug in essentially anything I wanted on this 12 volt system and just put a fuse in here. So if I wanted to add some lights in the future, anything that like a normal car accessory would use, 12 volt car accessory, I could plug into here, which is fantastic. So that's, uh, that's how that's worked out. Um, I have obviously a couple switches up here. This switch up here, let's look, move you to the front. I'll get a good picture of all this. The way this works is I have a forward and reverse switch, which is tied into the speed controller. This is my up and down for my front linear actuator for my plow. This is a low, medium, and high speed for the motor. That all comes kind of pre-programmed inside of this. This is a speed controller. And I'll leave a link in the description of what kind of speed controller and, and axle I'm using. And uh, you can get these online. I bought mine on eBay. Anyway, the wires and all that is all hooked up and you can, um, it's basically pretty much plug and play. You just kind of have to read the instructions and take some guessing because some of it's in Chinese, but it worked out pretty good. Anyway, low, medium, high range, front and forward and backwards. And then over here, this is the, um, let's see, get that to focus here. This is my key switch. And this is my battery monitor, so you can see total 51.5 volts is the uh, you know the entire battery right now and that is red through this battery management this, this was a, like a, a whole system that I bought just to manage the batteries so this is connected to the ground and it also has a, a positive wire in there so I'll link this and I'm not going to go over exactly how I wired it all up because 
everything you buy, it just has the instructions on how to, how to wire it all up. So if you're really interested, um, you know, you can, you can just follow along on how that's all wired up. So this is, this is pretty self-explanatory. It shows you your amperage when you actually are driving. It actually has a, a timer down here to see how long you have been, um, your batteries have been operating, which is kind of nice. There's a bunch of other kind of features that you can do for battery management. So anyway, so that's that's the on-off switch for just the control as far as the battery is concerned and forward and reverse. Down here, again, doesn't look so pretty, but this is a breaker right there. And what this does is this is for my 12 volt system. So if I flip this switch on, my 12 volt system comes on, I saw this light comes on. And right here, this is obviously the light came on for the up and down of my linear actuator. So that's, that's kind of the control panel here. It's nothing fancy. I could add whatever switches I want. If I want to add some lights in the future, I could do that. It's, it's pretty simple. So I'll show you the linear actuator in work. All right, so this linear actuator, I can't remember. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. You can get all sorts of different ones. It's, it's pretty slow. If anyone has any recommendations, please put it in the comments. I'd love something that goes faster. Um, however, it was relatively inexpensive and it lifts, I, I want to say it was upwards of three to 500 pounds, I think. So, I mean, it was strong and, uh, you know, it's 12 volts, so it, it runs great. Um, it's a little longer than what I needed. When I originally built this, I had the linear actuator going from right here, just straight down. But then, you know, after a while realizing how inefficient that was for plowing snow, I built an actual setup that's similar to what you'd see on a regular snow plow. So here, let me hoist it up here. You can see, you know, that's, you know, probably about three inches off the ground. So, and you know, when you're plowing snow to back up and when you've plowed something, that's really as high as you need to go. But, I mean, I can go plenty higher. Just takes some time. Like I said, it can get pretty high. And that's pretty much maxed. When I'm enough, I'm driving down the street or need to go somewhere, I can raise it up pretty high. Just takes a while to drop it down low. So that's that's the front. I have it all mounted it just on this single rod here. Everything's mounted onto this single piece of steel. And then I just built some of these brackets that go down and there was a, there's a hole right here. And so I just put that right there and I'll, I'll take it off and I'll show you how it all works. But um, it was pretty, pretty simple. Just a little bit of welding, uh, nothing too complicated. All right, so I wanted something that I could take off easily um, for when I'm not obviously using the plow. It's all I have to do is there's this bolt and just take it off right there. Same with the other side. And then it just slides right off. Just like that, the whole system, whole mount is off and away I can go. And it goes on just as easily. Obviously it has kind of scratched up all the paint right here, but you know, it's a tractor, that's what it's used for. So anyway, so that's how that comes on and off. Like that, you can see it's all all built, self-contained, as you I guess as you'd say, so pretty self-contained. So this also this is uh, this plow came from an old Craftsman lawnmower, and I picked it up for like I think it was like thirty bucks or something like that. And anyway, it works great. You can also tilt the blade left and right. So, I mean, it, it plows really well in that regard. Now, as for the snow chains, these came, they, these were for like a, a four by four truck. I mean, these are really nice snow chains. I found them at a secondhand store 
got them for super cheap as well. Again, as you can tell, this build has been everything just secondhand, what I can find, piece things together. You know, I wasn't trying to spend tons of money on it. And I originally didn't have these and was plowing with nothing and it has an open rear differential, you know, so it's not locked or anything like that. And I obviously was getting stuck and it was really hard and one tire was spinning and you know, I couldn't get anywhere. As soon as I threw these chains on, it was night and day and I can go anywhere with this thing in the snow. I was so surprised that even with having an open differential, I still thought I'd be slipping around. Not a chance, it, it plows snow so well. And I will, I don't have, there's no snow right now or else I would film it uh, plowing snow. Hopefully we get another snowstorm and I'll throw up a separate video of this plowing. But uh, anyways, I had to cut these down. They were obviously too big. They're made for a, you know, like a 33 inch tire or something like that. Uh, anyways, so I had to cut down a couple links and then I re-welded the, on the back side, there's just like a little a grommet that goes inside and I re-welded that on. And yeah, once with those few, few sections taken out, they, they work great. So that's the story on those. They come off pretty easily and I, I'm gonna take them off right now just so I can uh, show you guys this driving around. Probably don't have to jack this up, but it's always easier to do it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Just like that, they're off. And like I said, I just had to cut this uh, this link down and I just re-welded a, uh, a nut on there. That way this can, can couple in. So that's how that was done. Like I said, these are really, really nice snow chains. And they work perfect for my project. One thing I forgot to mention is this lever right here on the side. What that does is that's your high low. So you got two, oh that's a little it's a little loose, so I need to fix that. So this right here forward, that's gonna be your high range. If you pull it back, that switches the gears inside the transaxle to give you low range. I am normally on low range, obviously, when I'm plowing and pulling trailer. Um, but if I'm wanting to get somewhere, uh, as you just saw, it can actually move pretty quick and pop it into high range and you can kind of get moving along. So anyways, that's how that works. And then obviously this low and high, this is just varying how much power goes to the motor itself. So if you have it in low range, it just pretty much limits the amount of amps going to the the actual motor has nothing to do with the gearing. This is all the gearing. <laughs> this will give you more amps when you fully push down on the pedal, whereas that will give you less. So that's all. 
All right, I'll give one last kind of good look at it before I put it away. Uh, this is kind of the final build video, like I said. It's fully operational. It works great. I've used it for about a year now. Um, it's taken me a while to get this video out, <coughs> but it's it's a fantastic little lawn tractor. It pulls really, really well in low gear, and it looks awesome. You know, it was honestly just a fun project just because I got the tractor for cheap, and I always kind of wanted to build um, a better electric lawn tractor because I had the one, but uh, this one looks way cooler <laughs> and, uh, and is much more functional. The plow on the front works fantastic. I'm thinking I need to actually hook up these lights. That would be awesome. Uh, but that's the only like thing I really am wanting to do with it. Uh, if you have more questions, please put them in the comment section below. And yeah, until next time, here, let me let me give you one good shot at this transaxle so you can kind of kind of see if you're not familiar with it. Again, the other videos have have more details on this and even the the amperage and the you know how many amps it puts out, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, there you go.